Okay, this is a live interview. This is a live interview with the IPOB lead council. You find it, your four Esquire. He is here with us. He will take us through what happened today, what transpired in court, and also what we need to know. Barista, you are online. First of all, we would want to know your name. <coughs> and as well, what transpired in court today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chepas. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure having me on your platform. Uh, my name is Sifa Yudjafo, uh, IPOB Council, and also uh, Council to Nambikano. Of course, um, the world is away that the matter came up yesterday. Before yesterday, it was adjourned for the hearing of our application, challenging the jurisdiction of the courts to continue or entertain the charge, seven countermeasure charge filed by the federal government against our client, Mazin Nandika. When we file this application, which goes to the root of the charge, substantially charge, challenging the judicial court to hear the charge. The prosecutor, that is the federal government, filed a counter application, counter affidavit, a response to our application. And uh, we file our reply on law, indicating that issues have been joined by the parties. The matter was consequently adjourned to 18th, being yesterday for hearing. So we left. That was December last year. Getting set for regular slot of yesterday. Because the essence of that application is the is that if the application succeeds, that will be the end of that case in court. And our client will be freed. The child will be dismissed. And you will be freed and be acquitted. Because what we are saying is that the, the seven count charge, amended charge, file against, file against him by the federal government, not disclosing the offense by the allegations contained therein. Because we cannot put something or nothing and expect it to stand. He who alleged, alleged must prove. And the law is that at this point in time, if social allegations are being leveled against somebody. There must be what they call proof of evidence that we attach to the child. It may look at that proof of evidence we show what we expected to see in court at the point of trial, whether the allegations as contained in the paper, whether they can be sustained by that proof of evidence. So we have critically look at this I made a seven count charge and arrive at an opinion, conclusion that they did not disclose an offense committed by our client. So we file an application to challenge it in line with the provisions of the law. Then, 12 hours, 24 hours before the day slated for the hearing of this application we are served with another amendment to the charge. If the federal government is seriously disposed towards ensuring speedy trial of this case, or if at all they have a case against our client, the business of court yesterday was to hear this application challenge the regional court. And if the court hears it and said, look, this application is not meritorious. We can proceed with trial. Then we move on. And if the court hears it and says, look, there is no charge before me. There is no offense disclosed by the charge in file against this man. And as such, I will not call him to go into trial because of trial. Because of trial. He has to go. Then that will be the end of the case. But because they don't want the matter to go on. 
They amended their charge. Filed and served us 24 hours before the date set for the hearing of the case. So in that case, it wasn't amended in good faith. And the essence or intendment is nothing but, but to truncate the proceedings of yesterday. We just succeeded in doing it. Because we are ambushed. So it's an application apparently filed in abuse of court process. You're not given time to look at the charge. You're not given time to interact with that client before the date. The matter was a job for here. That was yesterday. So we said, okay, no problem. It came to court yesterday. The court was told that our client cannot take plea to the charge. Because this is not a banana republic. This is a country founded on rule of law. And this is a democratic institution. Justice must be done to all parties, all manner of parties. Not only be done, it must be manifested to be seen to be done to the parties. We objected, and our objection was upheld by the court. And consequently, I joined the matter to stay for, for him to take plea, allowing us time to have interaction with him on the extent of the charge before. We have looked at the, at the, at the, at the amended 15 count charge. That, car, that charge, the recent one they filed, is as useless, worthless, as a paper you can probably have a, a drafting sheet. Paper. It's even more frivolous, more offended, more ridiculous than even this amended seven count charge they filed. Because it's for the duplicity of child, not counts. And a number of, uh, number, number of deficiencies, deficiencies and issues. So, if the entire 15 count amended child disclosed no offense against him, and can, that I can assure you of, for sure, 100%. And we have done the needful. We are with trial tonight. Of course, you had the uh, SM. This is us who said, who told you when we went to, went to bed this morning. At 4 a.m. this morning, we walked on trial tonight. And they write about for two page documents. That's no objection to the charge. And we were able to demystify the 15 count charge one by one. We took them one by one and sufficiently addressed it. So, and on the face of that application, the court cannot proceed. Because application is not only important, it's fundamental to the judicial of the court. What we are saying is that in view of the fact that this amended 15 count charge prefer against our client. Disclose no single offense was error that he has committed. That substantially bereft the court of the decision to proceed. Well, there's no charge before the court. So it will now invite the court in the second set to examine what to file before him. Take the decision one way or the other and determine for the fall whether there's a charge before him. If the court found there is no charge, that the charge file is as good as worthless paper, as good as drafting sheet, as good as tissue paper, the court will have the option that to do the needful by dismissing the charge in each entirety and acquit our client. So, of course, you see today he she made it, the court made it um, abundantly clear that she will hear this application before pro 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 proceeding. So that was actually what happened today. However, I wish to observe, because I want to tell you what transpired in open court, because we are in there. The, the, there was a report of compliance, partial compliance with order of court made by the, uh, by, 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 the, by the system services. They reported compliance on aspect of um, uh, some, some directive being by the court on the welfare of our client. The reported compliance, so much without being far from him. Apart from the fact that the issue of his resting was also discussed, because court mandated them that they should change his clothes. It should be changed, clothes should be changed before today's hearing. But their predicament was explained to the court and also to us before the court started. However, well, that should have been resolved by now because we are making some clothes available to him. So, other issues 
and strategies we intend to adopt in the course of the hearing or trial, they will remain private. But I can assure you that there will be, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. That is settled. That I can assure you. So, um, I believe today is a good day. And of course, you, see, you can see our clients very delighted uh, about the outcome of uh, today's proceeding. Uh, so, uh, we have no doubt whatsoever that our defense has been fortified and um, there's no escape route. All right, thank you very much, uh, Barista. Um, one question and concern I have here is, um, you know, I've been an old man in this case, um, ranging from when uh, I would allow me to say the f during the first uh, missionary journey of uh, Namde Kano. I mean, the first time uh, he was um, arrested and brought to court, uh, there were various occasions uh, the FG, the prosecution did uh, amend charges, uh, charges upon charges in the middle of uh, trials. They would uh, from nowhere bring and attack charges, trump up charges, you know, just to truncate the proceedings. And uh, this time around, uh, the second missionary journey, so to say, uh, do we have any hope uh, saying that such thing would not happen or repeat itself? <clears throat> Thank you so much. Um, we have to be mindful of the fact that The entire schedule of the court and also the entire uh, movement of the case. Exactly my point. And and the, we in the we the defense team we not put our hands because they are they want to reroute us into taking some a, 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 to taking a dimension that will please that probably that will give them what they want. So and uh, we have to advise ourselves when such thing happen. We have to smart, smart enough to understand the strategy they are adopting, which is dangerous to our case. And also to adjust to a strategy or, or, or a strategy that will assist our case. So that was why we said no, we can't proceed. We can't, if they had wanted to go on, they go on yesterday. If the court has had our application yesterday, probably the court would have do, done the one application for ruling. Then all proceed for the trial if the court so pleases. But they have a reason for filing this amendment at 11th hour. At 11th hour, you won't tell me that the prosecutor were not there since December last year. They were there, they were. I don't think they traveled for this part because they, they were here working. If they had wanted to amend the, the, the process in good faith, they would have done that. I would have promptly without wasting time. So the court was that situation. That reckless amendment they usually impact upon was also. Brought the attention of the court. The court is fully familiar with that. And I but the such chief actually wasn't part isn't particularly impressed. Because he expressed an open court. So and we put it on record that if actually they want this matter to go on, they should stop amendment. They should stop it. Let's go on with this case. Because any further amendment to the charge will also affect what we are doing and delay the proceedings, elongate the proceedings. Because once the schedule of the court is truncated, it will affect the proceedings of the court and it will delay the proceedings. By ordinarily, with, by now, we should be talking about a date for ruling or application challenge the of the court. But today we are talking about a date to hear it. I hope, I hope they will not further amend their process and file again. On, on on 15th of uh, February against 16 state for here. I hope so. That's okay. I hope so. But the watch you know that from the antecedents since 2015 we've been in this matter. 
This is the sixth time the federal government of Nigeria, through the Office of Attorney General of the Federation, is amending the charge the, the filed against the defender, against the Namdekan. So let me hope that they will not amend for that. So I can pro proceed. You accuse somebody of criminal offense. Five frivolous charges in court, which the essence is just to ensure that he's detained at the infinitum. And we said no. Release him. Otherwise, look at it, look at our application challenging the competence of the charge and also the usual of the court. Hear it. Take the show one way or the other. Allow the court to rule. I for the court, court opportunity to look at what was filed before, what is filed before her, and deliver only one word or the other. Then we can take it off from there. You shouldn't continue to amend process consistently. It's not good for the administration of justice. It's not also good for this kind of trial, particularly when our client is in detention. His liberty is at stake. They should grant and release him, grant him bail. Your application will decide and grant him bail. Then we can come back if you want to continue to amend, no problem. Once it's free, if you want to amend to under count charge, we are here for you. We don't have problem. But let him be free. Here the one we are saying that he must be released unconditionally. Here the one we are saying that the charge before you, before the file before the court, are frivolous charge counts that cannot even be sustained by proof evidence. Let me give an instance. Okay, I won't say this because I don't want I don't want to preempt them. I will have said something. That, will, that is very fundamental to what they fire, but I don't want to prevent them anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I won't say I won't prevent them again. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have uh, two questions uh, regarding this. Mm -hmm. All of uh, the questions are connected to what happened uh, yesterday during the court's uh, decision. Uh, the court decided that, number one, that the Department of State Security Services uh, allows uh, the defendant a change of clothing, as you have just uh, touched. I just want to ask, could there be a fine? Because it is clear that uh, the DSS has uh, defiantly disobeyed this court uh, order. You know, uh, since last year, the court has repeatedly pointed on this, and uh, it is clear as well uh, the whole world is saying that Mazin Amdekano has this clothing on since uh, the 29th of June when he was uh, extradited illegally to Nigeria. What do you have to say about this place? Okay, let me explain this in a manner you understand. This was other court made yesterday. And of course, you are away. By the substitute order of court on visitation, on visiting Namdekano, our client, we do matters in this facility where he's been detained. We only allowed to visit him Mondays and Thursdays. And yesterday was Tuesday. And we don't also want the SS to get clothes for him. That's the point. We don't want them. We want to undertake it. The family has already done that for him. And uh, what they are saying is that the family will not have the opportunity to visit him yesterday, taking into consideration the time the proceedings ended. So since they are coming tomorrow to see him, that they should come with the clothes. That was what I explained to the court because obviously we wouldn't want to give them the opportunity to go and so get a clue for him. I don't want that. We don't want that to happen. So let me see what to, what plays out tomorrow because hopefully tomorrow they will be make, they will make available to him the clothes already uh, already um, brought for him. So let me see what plays out. If anything happened to the contract, they will take it off from there uh, because this time around. Of course, we, are, we heard about what happened in court yesterday. Yes. Because several you have initiated committed proceedings against the director, the director General of SSS on account of gross violation of court orders, flattening of court orders with impunity. So in, two, in those two occasions, the registrar of the Federal High Court refused to sign sign processes is that are there too. So apparently frustrating the process. That was made known to the court yesterday. So, and the courts reprimanded, admonished them to ensure that his or her orders are obeyed. Because the court will not be dishing out orders without orders of the court being respected. So, if the courts will make an order, then establishment will not obey. Then, what are we doing in court? What are we doing there? Well, that was also brought to the attention of the court. If you are, if you are in court for justice, 
to, 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 for a client to be given justice. That means if at the end of the day, the court said this trial, this charge, the application in file challenging the competence of the charge is meritorious. I hear by dispute the entire charge and acquit our client. They are by asking him to go. That means they will not allow him to go. Yes. They will not allow him to that's go. That's what it means. So, if the order of the court must obey at this point in time, so that by tomorrow, if you get some superior orders of the court, superior orders, fundamental orders, then they also obey it. So, I also commend them for partial compliance with court order. Because there are some other issues around. We're expecting them to comply with Particularly in regard to directive being provided by the court last year, December, and penultimate proceedings. So we are expecting them to comply with the entire directive, which is ordered of court, given. So the issue of his dress will be taken up at next adjourned date if they fail to honor what will happen tomorrow. The clothes have been, that we have been taking here to him tomorrow to, 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 to use. So if they refuse them access to refuse them access to this group, then I will even make it public. I won't even wait for the next agenda. I'll make it public. Of course, I don't those part of I don't keep it for so long. I'll let tell the word about what is playing out. So that's all. That's settled. Okay, that's okay. Um, Barista, in simple um, uh, answer now, uh, just this question is uh, following the former. Uh, could you please tell us uh, what about uh, the the decision by the court? Uh, for transfer, or should I say the application for transfer, transferring the defendant from the DSS custody to the correctional center, the prison custody. Uh, knowing fully well that uh, in the DSS custody, there are a lot of uh, restrictions therein. Uh, yesterday, we had you mention uh, about the bugging of his room, about uh, being, uh, you know, confined in a place where he, he, he doesn't even uh, receive uh, you know, free flow of air and all that. So what do you have to say about that? Um, I may not effectively discuss this subject, this topic, for reasons known to me. We are we'll learning our lessons every day uh, because uh, a number of things are being shared to the public. This topic is very pivotal to us because we are working on something that will lead to uh, court intervention. So, I'll, of course, what you are doing now, public is watching it. So, Absolutely. I wouldn't want to tell you what you are going to do tomorrow on that, or what you are intending, what you are doing already. Uh, because if I tell you now, they will find a way to circumvent it. That's okay. To circumvent that process. So, but I can assure you that it will be addressed. We are working assiduously to ensure that applications we wish to file in that regard. Uh, uh, we we have already filed an application. But we're doing uh, taking further step to do one more application, which I may not discuss in this platform. Uh, that application will resolve this issue. That's okay. Uh, predicated fundamentally on the flouting of court orders and the other 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 infringements and prejudice, which uh, we are passing through, and he also is passing through in the custody of the DSS. So we are going to. Uh, ventilate them before the court. I will not, we may not wish to discuss in the public domain because uh, once I say a word here, they are watching me every day. Oh, okay. Once I say a word, they will go back to the drawing board or to the table to go and correct the, uh, what they could to, to see how to put their house in order. And that may be reason why what happened yesterday. That may, that may be responsible for what happened yesterday. But they are waiting for me to come, for yesterday to come. So they were ambushed So, and uh, we have learned our lessons. Uh, so if all the process will find out, we are not going to make anyone public again. So we we'll keep it to ourselves. If you want any anybody that wants any court process, you go to court and obtain it. But for, for us to make process for public, we'll stop it. We can't make any product process for public again. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Barista. Finally, yeah. finally, uh, during the court proceeding, there was also a concurrent case going on at uh, the High Court in Abia State mm -hmm. uh, regarding the fundamental uh, human right, you know, of uh, Mazin Namde Kano. And we also learned that um, there was a win-win at the other end. Uh, a lot of um, rewards, uh, awards, so to say, that was allotted to Mazin Abde Kano and all that. Uh, could you please uh, tell us, is there any way this win-win uh, could be a stepping stone or a green light or whatever favor to this uh, case at the Federal High Court Abuja? 
Thank you so much. Um, we are delighted to hear about, um, to receive the news of the judgment. Uh, in my own, uh, I commend my colleague who also is in the matter, uh, who has been following up on the matter, handling the matter. I commend them. It's a fundamental right action. Uh, the courts also, my, the, the, the most interesting part was the fashion is the fact that the court in it, uh, wisdom, in his wisdom, condemning its entirety the illegal invasion of mass land premises. They had bloody onslaught in his house, killings, and attack. And that consequently, the United Federal Government to tender apology to him. Because what I'm saying is that there's no amount of money you pay to, you are. Uh, the amount of damage you are what to bring into Mazuna and to probably to compensate him for what has taken place for the lives lost in his house and also for the damage done to his premises. And also, do you know he was he, 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 he have killed him? Of course, him. of Had course. Had he died, are you talking about only would one billion naira be enough to compensate the family? No, of course. Because and a know, dead man doesn't face trial because, because now they count what billions of dollars, what well. billions of pounds, what billions of um, of euros today. So. I, I, I am more, in, more, 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 more at, at home with the fact that the court condemned that invasion and the attack and the killings that took place here. And also, that is the federal government to attend the apology. Just like what happened in my house, when the court also issued, uh, the, the, uh, 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 awarded them, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about damages awarded against the, the security agents that invaded my house. Having so recognized there was yeah. something. But, but in fact, that the court condemned the, yes. the invasion of my house. The killing, the carnage there. So this goes ahead to send a strong message to the world. Because the judgment also we use in international court. The judgment of ten today we use in international court. To establish a point. To establish a point, a point worth more than money. That's my, my interest. That's my my, 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 my happiness. And because if the, if, 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 if the, if the courts, the judiciary is not checkmating these excesses of the of the of the security agents, the courts not checkmating them, then they will continue on about it. I, I can assure you that if this judgment are obtained just last month, December second, against the people that invaded my house a year after, was delivered before June sixth, two thousand twenty one, my house they will not come to my house again to kill my PA and bond him. That second invasion would have taken place. But because they come, they came the first time and succeeded. The second time they came again. Nothing was nothing happened. But by virtue of the fact that court has made a pronouncement, the invasion of Mazin and Kano premises in the manner they did, killings that took place there, we are over to eight persons who are murdered in cold blood. Innocent people, people who are harmless, we are murdered in cold blood. It's condemnable. It's a crime against humanity. Of course. And consequently directed the federal government to tender apology. It goes a long way. Very it well. goes a long way to tell them that there is a serious problem for them yes. before the international court and before the before the criminal court issue too. So, and I believe that the security agents will learn their lesson and operate within the confines of the law establishing the the, 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 the agency because they've been so vigilant, they've been so lawless, they've been so reckless. See what happened in court today. See what happened in court today. But see what's happening in court today. The, the situation outside the court was peaceful. Because I have, I have constantly admonished people who are coming in solidarity with to the trial within Nambikano. His fans, his supporters, his followers who are coming there to be civil. And they, they have consistently been civil in their conduct over there. Even yesterday, nobody noticed that people were there. They were just somewhere clapping and singing without any form of violence until today. When you see criminals who were heavily armed made up of Alsace and Fulanese that came to attack innocent people in, within the court premises. They were sponsored, and I believe. And they were coming, the security agents were there watching them. Helplessly, they were, there was not any form of resistance of, on, 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 on their part. They, they have their few they, they, they have their way. They have their few days. Attacking innocent people. It happened today. So these are things that will tell you that we have a long way to go. Even outside the court premises, the camera of the court captured the entire thing that happened. And some media houses, some media, some reporters, pressmen were attacked today. Cameras were smashed. Cameras were, 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 were destroyed today. In the presence of security agents. And nobody speaking. Of course. So these are things that are condemnable. I, so nearly, I nearly escaped the stampede. You see, so these are things that need to be addressed as quick as possible. 
we need democracy. We, 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 and, and I believe we should all operate within the confines of law. We should be protected by the law. We should be protected by these secluded debts, yes. not to be attacked by them. I guess all odds. That's my plea to them. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, Thank you me. very much, uh, Barista. The next yeah. agenda date for this, please. The next agenda date is February 16. As a matter of fact, of course, I've made it public. Tomorrow, date has been vacated. The matter is no longer coming up tomorrow, being 20th of uh, January. It's coming up on 16th for hearing of application, challenging the usual record to hear the trial, to hear the charge. So that is a very fundamental application. Yes. So and the court said you will hear it and determine the, case, the, the application, rule on it one way or the other before taking further step. So that's what we, the rest of the court on the 6th of, uh, on 6th of February 2022. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. It is my pleasure uh, being with you, Barrister, Thank you, the lead counsel of IPOB. You have just spoken with uh, the Biafra Times, uh, the correspondent of Biafra Times here, Chikwa Sonwitbe, and this uh, interview session is being streamed on uh, Biafra TV. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Or should I say uh, thank you for having me? Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. I wish you safe journey back to your destination. Thank you. And then bless. Thank you.